I've got a TV series Ooh. that I like, Nigel. Oh, yeah. What's that called, Gareth? And a, a book series that I like, too, called The Expanse. Oh, yeah, I've heard of it. I've and never heard of that. Every... you never heard of it? <laughs> Never heard the spectrum I've heard about stuff. Um, <laughs> what, what's that then? Both statements are false. Um, so we've got the the expanse and Telltale. Do you remember Telltale? I do. They did the a great guys... Walking Dead game. Now I always had a theory that you could just literally do nothing in a Telltale game and respond and pretty much get the same story. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much. I, I was always. I was always determined to do a playthrough online and just not pick any decisions. And I started and I did Batman. And it's just so funny because he just comes across as an utter arsehole when he doesn't say anything. It's great. Maybe I should go and maybe I should uh, follow that through. I I'm currently going for a game um, made by Square Enix. Uh, Life is Strange number two. Mm. Uh, because it's, uh, it's uh, I think it was free as a premium member on PlayStation. And it's very similar to the Telltale games. Obviously, they've made the first one. That was brilliant. Which is the off the one. back. Yeah, it's it's mm. not the same storyline. It's a different storyline, okay. slightly different. Um, but very, very in a similar vein, you control uh, a player. And you walk around, you interact, and you do certain things. And, da -da -da. and you get the option not to speak. Sometimes I have been looking down at my phone, and I look up and go, oh, I could have selected. And then it disappears because you haven't done anything and they just sort of like remark that you're ignoring them or something oh got nothing to say you know uh and that's how i feel telltale has sort of created this new sort of genre where it's a walking simulator with a story and you just basically control your character to go from one place to another place and then just interact with the environment until something happens it's, it's it seems to be working for them as a model um now well, they didn't because they went out of business. Remember? Well, what's what's this? This then? is their come. This is their comeback. This is because... what, this is this is as double novelty here, Nigel. Because I played. They haven't made a game for ages. Um, I only heard of them because they made a Monkey Island game. Mm. Did they? Yeah, they did. It, it was uh, the fourth i think iteration i can't remember tales of monkey island i think it was called okay. and it was actually an interactive it was a proper monkey island game interactive not like um their normal thing like Point and click. wolf and Mo wolf is it wolf among us and then you've got the game of thrones one and then you've got the walking dead ones that they did yeah they're all just walking simulator where you into you get from a to b and something happens the, that you have no control one, over yeah, the, the first one, though, the story in the first one, I thought was brilliant. I thought it was very uh, The Walking Dead one? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I did actually buy the second one because I, I did enjoy it. I didn't nah. get to play. And then I, I did the, they had the, the four extra bits, the four extra DLC versions of it. I think it was 400 days or something, um, which they were okay. And I didn't continue with the story, and I really should because I've got it. Mm. I could play it, but it's interesting to see if they've gone from that model of you don't literally do anything apart from walk around, get to point B from point A, interact with something to move the story on, and if they've actually gone to more of a Monkey Island, Tales of Monkey Island sort of route that they initially took because that was a literal puzzle game mm. it'd be interesting to see what they do with the expanse okay okay well if they're making so, a comeback let's go so my first question is um are the guys who write the tv show yeah. Are they involved? Oh, is that um drama? Drama. Yeah. So, so in a nutshell, what's the expanse about, mate? He said, "Give me three months." The expanse is um is about uh it's the future. Humans have colonized the solar system, kind of split ourselves into groups. You've got majority of the human population living on Earth. There's about ten billion there. You've got a big colony on Mars that broke away from Earth. 
uh, they're quite militaristic and into technology and stuff and then you've got the the working class people who live in the outer planets who do all the mining and stuff of asteroids and bits called the belters um, which are called the belters or referred to as the opa yeah and um Basically, they they keep teetering on war. The Belters are upset because they keep getting abused. The Martians think that they're the hottest shit, but they don't realise that the UN's got them like bloody outnumbered. Um, the mm. UN is just teetering because they've, they've got so many bloody people. And then one day, this company called Protogen find this uh, this molecule. And this molecule can rewrite stuff. And the molecule creates this giant alien space gate, which allows people to travel from uh, one star system to the other. And because of that, a big rush happens. Mars then gets screwed over because there's no point building Mars up when you can uh, uh, make it a habitable planet when there are habitable planets through ring gates and short trip. Yeah. Um, but it's all done. Uh, the physics is incredibly realistic. It makes you thinks about time it takes to travel from one point to another. So when you have comms, you have like delay on the comms. So if you're sending messages backwards and forwards from people and at the other end of the solar system, you get like a nine minute delay, um, things like that. Um, okay. It's really, it's, 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 I, I refer to it as proper kind of science fiction. They don't have artificial gravity. So when you're, you're flying along, you can, um, you have to take this, you have to take drugs in order to make sure you don't pass out. So similar to like the pressure suits, but, inside your actual body they always call it juicing um but you can use that to your advantage um they don't have shields they have these things called pdc so point de point defense systems so you find like missiles the torpedoes make everything look dumb as fuck in everything else because these torpedoes can like you can have it fly into a building and hit like a cargo container because they've got like ai on them fitting with nuclear warheads have them fly into the sun have them chase down this that and the other it's just it's uh, science fiction kind of upgraded and i'd love the whole thing yeah, yeah the uh um, to get around the gravity situation or anti-grav you put the boots on with which have magnets in and they and they uh keep you to the floor they keep you grounded do you turn them on or or you have spin sections in space stations so it spins around push mm. you to the edge you get spin gravity and then you also have it so you have thrust gravity too so if the, the ship's always constantly accelerating it can simulate gravity um it's really a really good tv series the first three seasons are fantastic next three are pretty good and I it's, it's worthwhile three. saying um i'm not into sci-fi and stuff like that that much really um the only thing i watched was what's that um it's got ring gates in it but not all right sorry stargate stargate, stargate. Yeah. but yeah but it was it was not stargate universe new universe yeah where he gets uh, transported he's a gamer and he completed something and he got took to mm. the ship along with a load of other people and they started flying that's the only one i watched and that sort of that's the only sort of sci-fi thing i watched but they told me to watch the expanse and it's the story that gripped me with the expanse it, it's character driven yeah it has all this really cool spaceship but it's all character driven it's always this has just happened in the world how do these characters respond to it Hmm. And it's like you got the you've got a character called Amos who is hmm. pretty much a psychopath, but because he knows that he's a psychopath and he's done terrible things in the past, he knows that he needs to look to someone for like them his moral conscience, and he'll follow that person. He'll protect them and do all these other things. You've yeah. got Naomi who's a belter. She's got a bit of chip on her shoulder. She's got a really dark past where she did something really terrible, and she's running away from that. You've got Alex, who was a former Martian pilot, um, but he didn't want to give up piloting um, when he finished his term in the Martian Navy. Um, so he ran away from his wife and his kid because he wanted to be a pilot. So he gets to be a pilot. You've got Holden, who's kind of like the moral center. It's great because he turns into, he starts off and he's an idealistic arsehole and he <laughs> kind of matures throughout the the, the, the series. You've got he start, he does, you start, he does. Yeah. You can see that with him because he starts to realise it's not just black or white. There's mm -hmm. a bit of a, a meld there. There's grey and everything in between. So mm. he does, yeah, he does uh, grow as a character. They all do, actually. I think they all do. I think there's a, there's a character called Avasarala and she's um, she's a gravelly-voiced Earth politician mm. who um, 
she starts off and will do anything to protect Earth, and then she turns around and says, you know what, I'll do anything. And in the end, another character called Bobby Draper, a Marine, and um, she just hates all Earthers and gets towards the end, and it's like, no, we need to do what's right for everyone. And she has that turnaround, which is quite good when she meets the Arrowhead character. And it's just you've got lots of other interesting people. Yeah. But they're like the main the main ones that are pretty much run all the way through. I, it. I think each each character has its own character arc. And it's quite a satisfying arc for all these characters. And that's what I think is for me the important thing with the expanse. I'm I'm just hoping that the the game that they're gonna put out has got involvement from the original writers of the books who are yeah. involved in the TV series yeah. because then hopefully we'll get a good story because <clears throat> the expanse is hugely story driven. Yeah. So telltale should be able to do a good job on this. They should, but looking at that trailer, it looked like they were going down the uh, box ticking route again. Hmm. Yes, I don't, don't know yet. I really don't. Know I don't know. To... A lot of a lot of them. Well, obviously, drummer. We saw drummer. Yeah, drum. It's annoying because drummer is a character. That's if you drummer. read the books, she's three different characters in the books. There's a character called drummer. There's an engineering uh, lady. I can't remember her name. Character called Bull, who was in charge of uh, a space station that they moved into the ring space, and then another one called. Michio Pa, who was actually a psychotic person, so they did do by pushing her into Michio Pa role, they kind of removed that. But it's you need to you need to watch it. It's really good. So I, I'm I'm oh, and there was another thing that you forgot about Amos because Amos is a um, Amos an Earther. He's from Earth. Psychopath. He grew up on Earth. Yeah. So when he meets yeah. somebody who's grew grown up on say as a belter or they've grown up on Mars who has left less gravity, their muscles aren't quite as developed as Amos, for example. So he's a lot stronger than what they think. And they, that, that also plays in as well. Cause he sits there and goes, what, you can't fucking lift that, <laughs> you know? And it's, it's these little subtle thing. Also. Yeah. Like you said, I like the way that Amos, he, he's got no moral compass. He, he doesn't, feel empathy so he he looks to holden who does he starts off by looking to yeah. naomi then he looks to holden then it's like and a, then it's... and then after a while he then turns and he looks at um oh what's her name uh Pete calls her peaches oh, yeah peaches he looks at uh, her, but, but he has he has his rules and his rules are you either follow him you protect him or you kill him yeah that's his this week his, his his rule set you follow him you protect him or you kill him um, and there's there's a there's a lovely bit at the end of the second season where you've got this one character and his kid's been kidnapped by this scientist and he goes to kill the scientist and Amos is like kind of goes into because he goes to kill him Amos grabs out of his gun he pulls it down turns around and goes you're not that man yeah and then he lets him leave and then he turns around looks at the side of this guy and turns and goes but I am that man and then blows his brains out and like because yeah. he's because he is that person he is that person who's that's he, that his moral compass isn't quite there because he, he knows he knows that it wouldn't affect him but it would affect yes. the other guy yes yeah because mm. he doesn't give two shits um very interesting but, to see what they do with this game I, mm. I, i'm interested to see what they do with this game i'm hoping some of the ross and anti crew turn up um even if it's just like over the bloody radio something in regards to that or over mm. sarah or something um i'm assuming this game takes part between the Free Navy War, so where they have the war with the Free Navy and Belters uh, and um, drummers left the OPA to go and go off with their little crew, um, which eventually then joined the Free Navy. But um, so it should be might have a Marcos Anaros cameo, which will be quite good, and he's an arsehole. Um, absolute arsehole. I think I'm, he played I, that I looking, character gonna... well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he did. He did. He was so, so proper. And the, oh. when you see interviews with him, he's a lovely fella. That's the thing. You see the interviews with him, and he's a lovely fella. And he's like, I'm really glad you don't like him. Uh, and then there was, it was, he made a joke at NASA, right? So NASA was, um, they were following like a, a near miss of like a, an asteroid, to which he replied, No, it wasn't me. <laughs> and they replied back and laughed at him because the yeah, character's so famous for throwing rocks. At, uh, at Earth, well, the rocks with tungsten cores and um, stealth composites, and no one can see them. 
but yes, it's good. That's, anyway, yeah, he started a war because he was throwing these massive rocks, massive rocks at Earth, trying to start a war, and then they figured well, it was him. That's why. Yeah, but on the on on this note, Telltale, have they made a comeback? Is it going to be any good? Don't know. Time, time will tell. Tell. I think. Oh, oh dear. Um, I think I, I think I'm going to pre-order it because I'm a massive Expanse fan. Um, okay. <laughs>